Back in 2016, there was a campaign in the United States to replace Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill with a woman on the fallacious argument that a woman had never been featured on American currency before. Of course, students who, for whom history begins at their birth believed this tripe and trollop and campaigned immediately for the inclusion of a woman on American coinage notwithstanding the fact that some of them were collecting chains from the vending machines in the hallway outside with women's pictures on them. It's amazing how, in the whitewashing of history, or the washing away of whites in our history, perhaps more appropriately said, that we feel the need to ignore things that have happened as a justification to make them happen again, instead of using that as a precedence to establish a good choice. Now, I haven't seen this happen yet, but I remember that in April of 2016, I'll include the link below, NPR reported, or no, PBS reported, that um, Harriet Tubman had been elected to replace Andrew Jackson. Now, if you want to replace Andrew Jackson, I'm all for that. Andrew Jackson was a terrible man. He was not a president. He was the Treasury Secretary. He established the first national bank. He was... Washington's aide de camp because Washington didn't trust him, and for good reason. He was also a terrible president, terrible person, um, and replacing him is a good call because the $20 bill is the most common bill used by most Americans. So let's put someone else on there. I don't know if I agree with Harriet Tubman, but uh, let's go down the rabbit hole of women on our coinage. Now, when this came out, I mentioned it to my students because they needed to know. I actually brought in, because I'm one of those nerdy guys who collects coins and cash, to prove to them that I was correct. The very first time a named person appeared on our coinage was in 1979 when Susan B. Anthony appeared on the dollar coin. Since then, um, Pocahontas... Um, that was a Pocahontas. Uh, Sacagawea. Um, ended up on the, the dollar coin. And then since then, when they finished running out of states to put on our quarters, they've been finding obscure random women to put on the backs of our coins, including Anna Mae Wong, who I think is an athlete, Maya Angelou, the poet, uh, Wilma Mankiller, a Native American, uh, Sally Ride, the astronaut, and Nina Otero Warren, whoever the hell she is. But the fact of the matter is, is that women had appeared on American currency and coinage before that. I have in my possession at home an 1886 $1 silver certificate featuring Martha Washington. So for more than 100 years ago, George Washington's wife appeared on our currency. And uh, there was, oh, that's where the Pocahontas thing was. Uh, the um, There were some $20 uh, banknotes that had Pocahontas on the back of them uh, for a, a period of time as well. But Lady Liberty on the quarter uh, is a actual person who posed for a painting. Now, they don't have her name, and I'm not saying that it's a representation, but that's a real American who was painted, and then the painting was engraved on our quarters for, like, ever. And to so to say that there's never been a woman on our coinage or our currency is false. Now, there are people who don't know, perhaps, that Martha Washington had appeared on the $1 silver certificate, and if they were to walk it back and say, okay, I, I wasn't sure of that, I didn't know that, thanks for pointing that out, I would accept that, because I'm not really sure why I know that, or where I even got this $1 silver certificate, because I don't have a lot of them. I think I have like five, <laughs> something like that, maybe 10. And uh, so the fact that I have one of those is actually pretty unlikely. And so it would be easy to understand why people would not know that. But to go around insisting that it has never happened, to be confronted with information and deny it anyway, in a move to advance women over women who have already paved the way, kind of spits in the eye of women who have paved the way. Now, I don't know that Susan B. Anthony was a great choice, or Sacagawea was a great choice, or any of these that have appeared on the quarters, since some of them I don't even know 
I only know Wilma Mankiller because her, uh, they have a poster of her hanging up in the student union because it was Native American history or heritage month or something. Um, that's the only reason I know her name. And they probably only have that up because she appeared on a quarter. So let's highlight people that made a contribution worthy enough to end up on our currency. This is a worldwide thing. 20 years ago when I lived in Austria, they had famous Austrians on their money. And the only one I knew without having to ask was Sigmund Freud. Everyone else was not important enough to have made the world stage. Now, they were famous to Austrians. Um, I guess Mozart was on the like 1,000 or 10,000 shilling note. But I never saw any of those because that's a like a $1,000 bill. And that wasn't, you know, trading in those. But let's put people on our currency, on our signage, on our buildings and make statues of people who made a significant enough contribution that people have heard of them. Because otherwise... We're going to end up walking through the park in Madrid like I did and trying to ask people who all the statues are of, and nobody will know because they weren't really that important in the first place. Let's honor our true heroes, those who made a real sacrifice, and let's we can get rid of the trash. Jackson's not my favorite, so if you want to replace him, great. Excellent choice. Of all the presidents to don our currency, or all the people to make it on our species circular, he is the one least deserving of that honor. So... If we do end up with Harriet Tubman on there, I'm not sure how that will go. I'm not really sure I want to see a lot of her in my wallet. But uh, I don't, I don't, I know that I won't miss Jackson one bit. Um, anyway, some food for thought and some history today uh, from the chemistry department here in Nevada. Godspeed, make good choices, do your own homework. That's always good advice.